we took a ribbon and placed it upon the clothing that you're wearing, and we tore the ribbon. The tearing of the ribbon dates back to the days of King David. When his son died, he tore his clothing so that people would know that he was in mourning. Now we've translated that to the tearing of a ribbon, and the blessing is Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Dayan HaEmet. We pray to a God, ruler of the universe, and the judge, the judge of truth. Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tamid Ki Mimini Baal Emot Lachen Samach Libi Vayagel Kavodi Af Besari Yishkon Laveta I have set the eternal always before me. God is at my side and I shall not be moved. Therefore does my heart exult and my soul rejoice. My being is secure. For you will not abandon me to death, nor let your faithful ones see destruction. You show me the path, the path of life. Your presence brings fullness of joy and enduring happiness is the greatest gift that we have. Beautiful, sweet words from the Tehillim from Psalm 16. Adonai ma'adam b'ta'adehu. O God, what are we that you are regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? We are like a breath, and our days are as a passing shadow which come and which go like the grass, which in the morning shoots up renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. You cause us to turn to dust, saying, Return, O mortal creatures. Would that we were wise, and we understood whither where we go, for when we die we carry nothing away. Mark the wholehearted and behold the upright, they shall have shalom, they shall have peace. Death has taken our beloved rose from us. Friends and family grieve in their darkened world. In their silence there is lamentation. In their tears, loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For roses love that united us in life which death cannot sever. For her companionship that we shared along life's path. For the gift of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness is now a precious remembrance. We listen to words of scripture, words that bring us an ever new message, an ever new message of God's nearness. Means more li davira than I ro e no as for Benot Ash Yarti Baini al May Mino Khotya Haleni, now Shivi Yoshev, Yan Saini Bimagle Sedek Lemma An Shemo, Gam Kiele Begeta Mavas Veloira. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, and he restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. What is the source of my help? My help comes from Adonai, the maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way, and your protector will not slumber. See, the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection. God is at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. You're going and you're coming from now until forevermore. Take a moment to reflect. Everybody has a different wonderful thought and memory about Rose. Think about what she did, how she prepared, how she executed, how she did everything. Everything that she did can be summed up in two words in Hebrew, and those words are that she will be remembered as an Aishis Chayil, a woman of valor. A woman of valor who can find she is more precious than fine pearls. Her husband and her family trusted in her so they lacked nothing. She did good and never harm all the days of her life. She perceived that her labor was rewarding and her candle burned on into the night. She reached out to those in need and extended her hands to the poor. She was clothed in dignity and strength and she faced the future cheerfully. She spoke with wisdom. The law of kindness was always on her lips. The family, they all rose up and blessed her and her husband sang her so many praises. Many daughters have done valiantly. 
Rose has excelled above them all. We want to remember Rose very much alive, and it is our hope that with your help we will be able to find peace and solace and a concern for a world where every life is precious and every tongue gives us the joy of being a part of family. The human heart is the most real and the most beautiful thing. It is that, that richest gift that we have. The anguish of parting cannot destroy this more real of realities for the joys and the sorrows, for this has been as real as anything could be. The prophet Job, the wisest of wise men, said, Adonai natan ve'adonai laka, yehi shem Adonai mevoreh. God has given, God has taken away, blessed be the name of God. We are an ancient people. We're acquainted with grief in the valley of shadows. Job said, Adonai natan, God you have given. You gave us a loved one who will never be forgotten for all that was good and enduring in his life. We offer our deepest thanks. Adonai Laka, God, you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we say, Blessed be the name of God, but blessed, blessed be Rose's name that will live on as a blessing, and let us say, Amen. I ask you to take a moment to reflect. Think about the joy and happiness you had of having her a part of your life. The wonderful, beautiful, sweet memories will always be with you. So please take a moment. May the words of our mouths and meditations of our heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And in honor of Rose, not in her memory, but in honor of her, let us all say, Amen. In talking with Ellen, she was telling me wonderful and beautiful things about, about her mom. She had some things that she wishes to share. And her wonderful and loving husband has things that he also wants to share. Mom, this is not how I expected to lay you to rest. I envisioned a lovely service in this fair and beautiful gold chapel where Dad's and Mark's services were held. It's a sad day for me. It's the day I bury you. I always assumed that Mark and I would do this together, but instead I'm the only one left from our original family. I'm also so grateful, though, because I am 57 years old and you were 102. Not only did I have you for a long time, but you were so present, so with me. I adored you. I always loved you, even in my hellish teenage years. But I had the rare privilege of not just getting to know you, but having you really get to know me, who I grew up to be, and for us to become friends. Anyone who lived as long as you did suffers a lot of loss. You lost your husband, you lost your son, you lost your friend, and then you lost your mobility and pretty much lost your sight, which deprived you of your ability to read and to play bridge, two things that sustained you. But you still wanted to have a good time while you were here. As you said to John, surveying a table with hors d'oeuvres on it, John, I'm really done. But in the meantime, the hummus looks really good. I do think there is a certain denial of aging that perhaps kept you young. At 100, after surgery to repair your detached retina, you said to me, I don't understand why this is happening to me now. I've taken good care of myself. I always exercise. I ate properly. Me, Mom, this is why it's happening to you now instead of when you were 80. After looking at photos of yourself at the beach in your 20s, you said to me, I've had a wonderful life, but it's enough already. I had my time. With the world's crisis, which imposed greater isolation on you, I know you were more than ready to leave the world of the living. You gave me so many gifts in both material and immaterial ways, and most of all, you were a role model for me. You showed me how to be a strong and feminine woman like you. You used to say to me in your decrepitude that you wanted to get up out of your chair and run, that you saw yourself running. I hope wherever you are, you are running.
was 12 years old, the question of death occurred to me. And I asked my mom, Mom, what happens when you die? And she took from the bookshelf Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, and she opened it to a section of Song of Myself. And she read this section to me, and I will read it now with love in my heart for my dear mother-in-law, Rose. A child said, what is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is, or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners that we may see and remark and say, Whose? Or, I guess the grass is itself a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white, Canuck, Tuckaho, Congressman, Cuff, I give them the same. I receive them the same. And now, it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly will I use you curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people and from women and from offspring taken out of their mother's lap. And here you are, the mother's lap. This grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roof of now. Oh, I perceive after all so many uttering tongues, and I perceive they do not come from the roofs of mouth for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, and the hints about old men and mothers and the offspring taken soon out of their lap. What do you think has become of the young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there is really no death. And if ever there was, it led forward life. It does not wait at the end to arrest it and cease the moment life all goes onward and outward, and nothing collapses. And to die is different from what anyone supposed, and luckier. Thank you. We have come together, family and friends, in the Sarah made sacred, with tender, loving thoughts translating themselves into beautiful, sweet memories as we think about and have in our minds and in our hearts the wonderful memory of Rose Lerner. She was a beloved beloved wife and a loving wife to Morris for 68 years. But most importantly, a devoted and a cherished family woman, but a haver, a friend to all who knew her. She was the daughter of Joseph and Bessie, predeceased by her sisters and their families to Mary, to Minna, and to Helen. She was married to Morris for 68 years before he passed away in 2008. She was also predeceased by her son Mark, and Mark's wife is Beth. Her daughter is Ellen, 
her husband Jonathan, and her grandson, step grandson Daniel, his wife Melissa, and their children, her great grandchildren. How I wish that there were some words, a magical incantation in our hearts if it ease the hurt. But when we lose a loved one, a deeply loved one, we're left with that universal puzzle of pain of asking why. Why does our love bring us grief as well as happiness? So we're here to express our grief and to murmur our sympathies to all of us who knew and loved Rose the best. She was very special. She loved Mars. Their love was complete and unconditional. For 68 years, they shared everything in their lives. They enjoyed being married to each other, and they loved to hear the accomplishments of their family. She was a gentle woman, a kind, loving woman. She loved people. She was a strong woman, growing up, born and growing up in Irvington. She was Jewish, very Jewish. She met Morris in 1933, married in 1940. They lived in Irvington, in Newark, and then in Milburn. He was a teacher, and then a principal, and then the assistant principal in the school. She was a homemaker, a housewife. She volunteered at Reads to Kids. She loved doing everything she could for kids, but they loved doing everything together. They traveled the world, to Europe, to Paris, to the Far East, to Japan, to Israel, to the Middle East, to Egypt and Greece. She had a wonderful sense of humor. She was she was gracious, gracious, and she was interesting. She was an anxious Kayo, truly a woman of valor. Everyone in the family was wonderful and sweet, and everyone has precious memories that will always live on about Rose. After Mars passed, Ellen and Rose got much closer together, spending so much time together talking, talking about family and life. Rose had so many friends at the JCC, she tried to always enjoy every day of her life. I'd like to share a reading. And I'd like you to think of Rose saying these words. I'd like the memory left of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when my life is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times, of laughing times, of bright and sunny days. And I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun keep the happy memories that I leave when my life is done. We also have to say thank you to the healthcare professionals that were in her life that assisted her, that assisted ours, but assisted not only them, but assisted the family. We say thank you. Thank you to everyone who helped and assisted, especially Dr. Bita Kushan. I did not have the privilege of meeting her. But when I spoke to the family, I got a glimpse of a very special and a very unusual woman. Unusually vibrant and a powerful and unique woman, and I don't think that she would want to bring any more pain upon family members or friends anymore. Rose Lerner has passed away, being laid to rest in this family plot. And that deep in our hearts, whatever differences existed at this moment are dissolved and are forgotten. Rose was a devoted daughter, a sister, a sister-in-law, a mother, a mother-in-law, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother, but most importantly, a loyal and a respected, treasured haver, a loyal and respected, treasured friend. Her memory will live on as a blessing, as I say, Adonai Natan, Adonai Laka, Yehi Shem, Adonai Mevoreh. God has given, God has taken away, blessed. Blessed be the name of God. I continue with the El Molerach. El male rachamin, shachin bamromin, ham se minocho, na betil kan pe ashin na ho, bimalo kinoshima tarim, kizo hararakia, mazahiri, et nish mat yaki reinu shel leo lamom, al rachamin, yasirem besed verba leo lamim, Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence for the life and the love and the happiness that we share 
being a part of Rose's life, who has entered into eternity. O oh God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence. Let her soul be bound up into the bond of everlasting life. God, God is her inheritance. She will always rest in shalom. She will always rest in peace. And in her honor, let us all say, Amen. Call on their crop and my crop. Call Habasir Hasir Hasto Kite Hastecha. A voice cries out and says, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, all the flowers are the beauty of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord blows upon it. Baruch Atah Denai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Yatzar Yachem Betalmo Vezein Bihikala Lechem Betova Baruch Atah Denai Dayan HaEmet We praise you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who forms us in the divine image, who nourishes us and sustains us, who causes all of us to die, but who implants within us immortal life. Al Mekama Tavoba Shalom May the life and the love and the happiness that we share to being a part, being a part of Rose's life be with her at her eternal resting home with shalom, with peace. And in her honor, let us say, Amen. The dust returns to the earth as it was, as the Spirit returns to God who gave it. It is only the house of the Spirit that we lay within the earth, as the Spirit can never die. Receive in mercy, O God, the soul of our departed Rose. Grant her everlasting peace that you have prepared us for in a world to come. Though no human eye has ever seen nor ear has heard, nor mind has grasped it. It is our sure inheritance and our everlasting portion. Oh God, help us understand that grief and love go hand in hand. The Kaddish. The words of the Kaddish are the words that have kept our people together from generation to generation. We never want to have to say the Kaddish, but we say it for those that we love. We never teach it in school. We never teach it at Temple, because we don't want to have to say it, but we say it for those that we love when we have to. So it's an honor. It's an honor to say the Kaddish for her. And I ask you to all join in with me as we say, Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabo, Vialma Divra Chirute, Vialmlich Malkute, Vichaye Chon, Uv Yom Echon, Uvchaye to call Beit Yisrael, Vagala Uvizman Koriv, Vimru. Amen. Yehesh me rabo mevorach leolam ol meomaya. Yitvarach vishtaba, vipoar vitoman vit nase. Vitador vitale vitalal shemedu kurisha brihu. Leilam im kobir chosa vishirata. Tush vichata venechemata damirat vialma vimru. Amen. Yehesh loma rabo min shemayo vachayim. Aleno vial kol Yisrael vimru. Amen. O se shalom b'mama, hu ya se shalom. Aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael b'mru amen. May the Father of Peace send peace to all of us who mourn, comfort all the bereaved among us, in the whole household of Israel and in all of your households. And let us say in honor of this wonderful woman, amen. Now Judaism says that we never leave a grave without adding dirt into the grave. The first thing that I would like to do she had been to Israel. She walked in Israel. The first thing I want to do is add some soil into this grave from the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. Truly, it's a joy to add this dirt because she had been there and they had walked Israel. Judaism says that we never leave the grave, so we've added some dirt. I'm taking dirt and putting it all the way around this casket on all sides. To the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, above us and below us, showing that God's presence is all around. Judaism also says that we never leave until there is dirt on top of the casket. I am adding dirt at this time. Those of you who wish to add some dirt, by all means you can, for the love and the happiness that you shared, truly of having her a part, a part of your life.
stone that you've added into the grave. You've taken, you've laid it right in between where your dad and your mom are laid to rest. And that stone will always be there. If any of you have other stones or dirt that you wish to add, by all means you can. I will be staying cottage for the next 30 days, the traditional period of sloching, the period of mourning, in addition to saying Yisker on Thursday. It does conclude our service. Again, I want to thank you through this difficult of time for being here to help.